Hey there everybody, Blind Rob here and welcome back to Starting Out Solitary. This is week 219 and we're talking about being outed as a pagan or witch or whatever it is that you may be. I'm once again stepping in for Wednesday this week as a substitute, which is always fun. This, <laughs> this is a very complicated and complex topic for me. I mean, most topics are, but this one more so than others in a lot of ways. Uh, a large part due to the fact that I have a lot of experience at being outed as a pagan, outing myself as a pagan, <laughs> and in different ways um, over the years. Unfortunately, a lot of what I can say, and oh, trust me, I could say a lot about this topic, isn't really appropriate for this collab channel. <laughs> so what I might end up doing at some point down the road is revisiting this topic on my own personal channel and uh, going a lot more in depth about it and a lot of my experiences about being outed as a pagan. Um, <coughs> excuse me, and the various different practices that I practice along the way. Also, another reason why a lot of what I can say about this uh, topic is inappropriate for this channel, besides the fact that some of the stuff is just not appropriate, <laughs> and you get downright vulgar in some ways, is simply because we would be here for at least an hour, if not two or three. Anyway, so... <laughs> um, being, being outed, uh, be it be, you know, as being a pagan, being a witch, you know, being whatever... That's never that's never a good thing to have done to you. That's that's never a good thing to do to others. Uh, that's very rude. That's very insulting, especially if you're doing it to other people. And granted, there are occasions where it's not an intentional thing. You know, it's, it it can be an accident. And I've been there. I've been there in a situation where it was it accidentally happened. You know, I might have some resources with me. Um, and in those situations, a book or two that I thought I'd left behind, I left at home or left, you know, somewhere private. Um, but I forgot and they got brought out in public and people knew. Um, keep in mind, for the most part, I'm a very public and open book about myself most of the time. I would say about 90, somewhere between 80 and 90% of my life and all the aspects to it. So for the most part, I didn't really care about being outed as a pagan or letting people know, uh, especially as I got older. Um, <laughs> but things were... A little bit different when I first started out in paganism in general. I first got into paganism, I first heard about paganism uh, when I was 13 or 14 back in 2000, 2001. Uh, I first started getting into paganism myself in 2001, and I didn't have an actual practice until 2003 or 2004. Uh, so I was still in like middle school, high school <laughs> kind of age around that time. So, you know, things were a lot different. I had a much different attitude. And the thing is, is that your faith, your your religious practice is private, it's personal. It's no one else's business what you believe. On the other hand, safety, I mean, you like to have a safe, happy life, not to worry about being harmed or persecuted, you know, that that's something that everyone deserves to have. Um, it's understandable if you need to keep things private, if you need to be in the broom closet, so to speak. Um, you know, there, there's no shame to that, you know, it's, especially if you're being honest to yourself, honest to any deities, guides, spirits, or what have you that you may or may not uh, be interacting with or worshiping at the time, and, you know, to your, you know, to your beliefs. Um, <laughs> I mean, if I remember correctly, in general witchcraft, there is this this whole thing about, you know, staying silent about your practices in some instances, you know, that that's a good thing to be honored and, uh, you know, upheld. So, and the thing is, is, um, 
you don't need to be very blatant about your spirituality. And trust me, this is coming from someone who, especially in the early years, was very blatant about their spirituality, which is how I kind of, is in some ways how I outed myself, and how when I was first learning about paganism, uh, specifically witchcraft from a Wicca, Wiccan perspective, uh, which I never actually got involved in, but that's a whole more in, you know involved story there than is appropriate for this video and especially for this channel, at least at this point in time. <laughs> but it's that's that's also how um, I accidentally outed an entire community of witches and Wiccans of my age group that basically amounted to about a dozen to two dozen people. Uh, which was not good. Now, looking back on that, that was terrible of me. And granted, it wasn't that I was trying to or as I'm wanting to. It's just um, I was being very open as I tend to do. I wasn't so much, you know, so like that when I was younger. But you know, it's it's a trait that uh, as I got older and got and became more comfortable with myself and what I believed in, what I practiced. Um, <laughs> but still, you know, it's uh, one thing just kind of led to another, and it snowballs like a lot of things. A lot of things tend to do. Um, but in the end, I think that you know, I, you need to figure out: Do you want to be open? Do you want to be closed about your practice? Uh, do you want to be public about it? And, and not even that, but how public do you want to be about it? How private do you want to be about it? I mean, if you need to lie, I mean, lying is never fun or it's never a good thing, but sometimes it's a, ne uh, it's a necessary evil, especially when you're being threatened or you're in a situation where possible harm or persecution can occur. Um, of course, you don't necessarily need to lie, though in some situations that might be the easiest way to go about it. Once again, that's between you and yourself, you and your deities, spirits, guides, and your practice in of itself. But um, <laughs> you, um, you know, say what you need to. You know, uh, to to give an example, when I first got into druidry, uh, the druidry aspect of Irish spirituality. I still practice neo druidry to a certain extent, though it's not the primary focus of my my practice at this point in my life. Uh, it's just one minor aspect that makes up the whole matrix of my practice. <laughs> I was uh, first getting into the practice of being a bard, and a few of my friends found out, and they did not know what a bard meant outside of the context of role playing games. Uh, yes, I am a total nerd. I play tons and tons of Dungeons and Dragons and other such role-playing games. I am a pro I admit it, and I'm proud of it. Uh, but and I tried to explain that you know a bard is basically a poet seer, you know, an otherworldly, mystical, ethereal poet. And they're like, "Oh, is that kind of like being a witch?" And I'm like. Not exactly, though there are some some similarities. And I tried to explain it a little bit more. They're, oh, well, then you must be a shaman then. And I, <laughs> I've never used the term shaman to describe myself or my practice. Um, it, it, in some ways, that word, like in the most vague of senses, kind of works. <laughs> It's kind of accurate. That, that's like saying that, you know, apples and oranges are both fruits. Yeah, that's that's accurate, but they're different fruits in of themselves. Um, but, uh, but I'm like, hey, you know, whatever. I mean, it's not really accurate, but it's accurate enough or close enough that, hey, if that helps you determine, you know, figure out, you know, what I'm talking about. without me having to go into too much detail that's at the time was way too way too much to be comfortable for me and way too much to be comfortable for the people that I was interacting with at the time uh, um, and um, I mean as far as like being open being public I mean same thing with your you know with the jewelry that you wear 
you know, the the resources that you have, your altars, your tools, if, if you have any. Because you don't necessarily have to practice. You, know, you don't necessarily have to have any of those things to practice your faith faith though I'm sure though I'm fully aware that there are some forms many forms of various kinds of paganism polytheism where that's kind of essential especially if you are coming at it from a very mystical metaphysical bent um, but as far as jewelry you know you you can wear your jewelry and still wear it in a private fashion like especially if you're like necklaces and pendants you can wear that under your shirt what have you uh, I, I actually didn't really have any problem with in that regard <laughs> because, you know, being someone who's Brigidine, who worships, worships and is dedicated and devoted to Breed, to Breed, to Bridget, um, I always wore her cross. So anyone who saw it would assume that it was Catholic, which is hilarious because, no, I'm not Catholic. I'm not even Christian. Um, I was raised as one. I attended church when I was like in my preteens to very early teens, but no. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, you have to do what you need to do in order to stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Um, you know, life is a long journey. You might not always be able to be open about things at that point in time. Things may change. Who knows? It's totally understandable if you feel like, man, I totally want to be out and open and public about my path, my, my practice and my path. But you got to be honest to yourself. Is this a good idea for this point in time? Do First of all, do I care if anyone knows? Or if I care if the majority of the people in my life know? Am I even in a position where caring doesn't matter? Because, you know, minors, for example, are going to have a whole different kind of situation when it comes to being public versus being private about or open or closed about their practice as opposed to adults. Uh, being an adult, you have a lot more space, a lot more, you know, autonomy, you know, a lot more control of your life in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, it's, <laughs> I don't know, sorry, I, I could, I'm, I'm trying to figure out as much uh, details I could share with, with us as much as possible while staying, keeping things appropriate. But yeah, overall, it, you know, it's a tough situation because sometimes you need, just need to be private about, you know, things or you need to be closed about your practice. And as long as you are being yourself being honest to you and who you are and what you're practicing and if you are interacting with any otherworldly beings to them as well that's all that matters it's, it's no one else's business public or closed private or open <laughs> it's whatever just as long as you live a happy and fulfilling spiritual life I hope that kind of helps. <laughs> I apologize if this is, you know, not the greatest of videos. I, I, you know, I've known about this topic coming up for a little while now, and I knew I was going to be substituting in for Corvus once again. Um, and I'm like, yeah, there's a lot I can say about this. Oh, wait. I really can't, because a lot of it is very inappropriate, or, you know, especially for this in, in such a situation, such a setting, so that's okay. You know that happens sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, my advice is when getting into any kind of spirituality, especially one of a pagan bent, a pagan perspective, polytheistic perspective, or any kind of pers theistic perspective. Um, I guess even atheistic, you know, perspective to, to some extent. Though I have no experience or insight on that whatsoever. But <laughs> think long and hard about this. It's like before you get into practicing something, think about, okay, am I going to be allowed to practice this openly? Do I live in a, pla do I live in a place that 
will allow me to do this safely, where I can be safe and happy and healthy. Uh, it, are the people in my life going to allow me to do so? Am I going to be allowed to be open and public with them and be safe and happy? Am I in a position where I have enough control and autonomy in my life that it doesn't matter? Those are some of the questions that you have to ask yourself and you have to decide for yourself what you are going to be able and not be able to do. And, you know, that might change as time goes on, as you get older, as your situation is altered, is, is, uh, is changed. You, you need to come back and re-examine these questions and other such similar questions. You know, you know am, I, am I now in a position where I have more control in my life, that I feel like that I can be more open about myself and what I believe in my practices? It's 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 going to be up to you. It's it's going to be a long, hard, tough decision. Um, and whatever decision I'm uh, sorry, whatever decision you make, I was about to talk about two, try to talk about two different things at the same time. There, that doesn't really work. Uh, whatever you end up deciding, like I said, I hope that it makes you happy, whole, fulfilled, and blessed. Um. I myself, I've had a few rocky starts, but overall, being a very open and public person about myself has always made me happy and healthy and whole, but there were times in my past that looking back on it, yeah, I kind of wish I had been more, a little bit more private. It would have uh, saved me from a lot of trouble I got in, from a lot of problems I had to deal with at the time but you know hindsight is always 2020 anyway i hope this helps at least a little bit take care may breach bless have a good week